Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at tops going full hipster. Uh, We have uh, a bunch of Orion stuff in the uh, the man cave here, and then at long last, we're going to take a look at 10 great tiny knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from a longtime contributor, Oregon Knife Guy, uh, one, of, one of my uh, slip joint brothers out there. And uh, we did a Thursday Night Knives uh, in which the topic was... Uh, what do you, uh, what do your knife, your non knife friends think of your obsession? And his response was easy answer is don't have any. If a man doesn't carry a pocket knife already, then we have so little in common, there is no chance for a true friendship. And I read that and I have to say, I chuckled and I was like, you know, Oregon knife guy, uh, he walks a hard line. Um, but uh, I have noticed in my conversions at the office, so we'll, we'll call them conversion cases. Uh, oftentimes, people just need one in their hands uh, to 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 let the the uh, the longstanding you know genetic history that they have with the knife uh, come through, and suddenly they see how awesome it is. Sometimes people just need a little permission. Oh yeah, yeah, it's totally acceptable to walk around uh, with a pocket knife, especially uh, depending on where you live. My part of the world uh, is is a little bit pearl clutching on the knife end of things, but. Uh, but people are still people and they still love knives. So Oregon Knife Guy, I say to you, you're probably one of the best people out there to start converting people because uh, I know you have a, a, a really nice collection of slip joint knives. And that's a great way uh, to get people. Hey, remember your grandpa's knife? Here, check this out. Put it in your pocket. And that's how uh, you germinate the seed of a knife junkie. All right. Well, thank you, Oregon Knife Guy and everyone else who commented and participated in Thursday Night Knives and, uh, well, the rest of the week. Speaking of the rest of the week, I just want to uh, do a little, uh, say a little thanks to everyone who participated in Knives Live 2022. Uh, it was a great honor to be a part of uh, part of this 24-hour Knives live streaming uh, show to benefit uh, knife rights. It was awesome. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Doug Ritter on our, our on the knife junkie hour slot and we also had carrie uh from off-grid knives and just had a great conversation uh, ranging from different uh uh, efforts that uh, knife rights is going through to different ways to protect yourself uh uh, if you need to use your knife and you get busted and uh and then we talked about some stuff coming up in the offing for off-grid knives um but i was watching the the uh many of the hours before and after and it it was amazing to see how many people uh were there the whole time commenting and just raising money raising awareness and having a great time with their knife brethren and sistren or whatever that word is so great uh, i just want to tip my hat to shane gables uh who who germinated who started this idea and uh of course um Kev Lefty EDC and John Evans, who uh, helped put the whole thing together. I just uh, um, I'm I'm very impressed by the effort and was honored to be a part of it. So thanks to everyone for Knives Live 2022. Now, with that said, I think it is time for a pocket check. Uh, I've uh, liked wood on knives recently, and uh, I was in a mood, wood mood today, uh, so I I grabbed this. This was a gift to me from the great and powerful uh, Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. This is the Boker Smatchet, and I I adore this knife uh, it, for many reasons, uh, not the least of which is that it was a gift from a friend, uh, but also designed by a great guy, very creative guy, uh, Chuck Gadritis. And um, this is probably uh, uh, a perfect rendition, if you ask me, of a folding Smatchet. Smatchet was a big uh, double-bladed fighting knife from World War II, used a lot in the South Pacific, uh, that had these uh, sort of uh, uh, 
bellied edges, uh, two twin uh, bellied edges, like a giant dagger, like a short sword almost. And um, I love the way Chuck uh, interpreted that in a folder. Uh, this is made by Boker Plus. This is a really outstanding um, production. You know, uh, I think people give mixed reviews to Boker. I've had nothing but great experience with with my Bokers, but I don't have a huge collection. Uh, this, however, is is one of the smoothest ever. Uh, just uh, just falls back in. Now, it is a four inch blade and you get a little bit of weight, but it's not a super heavy blade like a hinderer blade or something like that. Uh, so that is real super smoothness and uh, and pivoty action that's making that fall in there. I love that giant fuller. And uh, really, it would take very little to put an edge on that backside, but you would be a mad person to do so because, of course, you would always have that exposed edge. Um, so just a moot point, but I always like to show off a thin thin enough swedge to sharpen. Uh, really cool sculpted pocket clip. And this wood is just gorgeous. I believe this is Cocobolo or Rosewood. Hm, didn't do my research as usual. I can't remember what kind of wood it is. I do know it's beautiful. Uh, so I had this in my front right pocket, uh, VG-10. This, in a pinch, would be a, a fearsome weapon, uh, that wide, broad blade. Oof. Okay, uh, next up, uh, for emotional support today and just general utility, if it came up, I had the uh, RSK Mark I. Uh, oh, wait, I, I'm sorry. In my notes, I put Mark III, Jim. I'm sorry. This is the Mark I. Um, the Mark III is the fixed blade. Uh, also awesome but this one uh just i just love hoag's uh able lock that's uh ambidextrous bar lock enhanced and man they did enhance it they just do a, a phenomenal job with the bar lock and i love this um this one in particular was a gift from um doug ritter and uh so will never leave my collection i had the large size one that i bought i gave that to someone um and uh this one means more to me anyway, and I'm more likely to carry the mini of this one, I must say. I love the the G mask is here, that purple, black, and gray. And then I uh, ordered an aftermarket uh, bug out clip for this one. I just don't like Hogue clips. They are of a thinner gauge than I prefer. I've never had a problem or issue with them. Never had one just fall out of my pocket or get snagged out of my pocket. Never had one bend. It's just a feel thing, and it's just a taste thing. So, um, yeah, I, I tend to replace the Hogue clips. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, lastly on me was uh, a fixed blade. And uh, this is one I almost never carry. And uh, I should more. It's, it's an easy carry. And it's a great knife. Bark River Knives Mini Bush Sacks. Uh, this is a, a Kydex sheath that I made for it. Uh, when I bought it, I bought it for uh, carrying. And it comes with a beautiful little leather uh, pouch sheath like bark river does uh but it's that's tucked away somewhere it doesn't get used this is this is how i carry this knife with the ulti clip and i carry this in the three o'clock position in the waistband usually when i do that uh the edge is forward in this case i keep the edge back if i need to to pull it out standard i have it just like this great little knife that's a2 tool steel uh but if i if i do a natural draw in reverse grip. It comes out Pickle style if I need to get all defensive. Um, thank the Lord I don't have to. Uh, this is beautiful, uh, polished um, micarta, that uh, canvas micarta with, ooh, I love it. The subtle, thin red um, liners there. You got a Coke bottle swell in the center. Now, this knife I tried to force a patina on, and it was an absolute disaster now i'm not sure why uh but this this steel did not patina the way uh others do for me um so i i polished it off there's in some areas like right here wasn't able to get it all off anyway just a great great knife uh i love bark river knives and i love their um the utility of this this knife in particular so that's what i had on me and i uh, wish we had some focus from the camera let's see that's what I had on me today. What did you have? Uh, leave it in the comments below. Um, so mine was the Boker, the Smatchet, uh, the Mini RSK Mark I, and the Bush Sacks from Bark River Knives. All right. Uh, I want to show off a, another cool knife uh, given to me by 
uh, this old sword and it's going out as a gentleman junkie giveaway knife because this thing is utter sweetness uh, it's from a company i really like i've only had a few knives from them have one in the collection right now uh, but it is the max ace and this is the balance k um, the one that i have is the big sandstorm k that is a cool knife they do incredible work i love max ace knives and one thing that I like about them is that if you like a design of theirs, like the Sandstorm or this balance here, it can be had in an inexpensive K110 version. K110 is analogous to D2. And uh, you would get the sculpted G10. Uh, or you could upgrade the whole thing and get, get the expensive version with the fancy steel and the fullers and the, and the sculpted titanium frame locks. And um, man, they just do beautiful work. And you can get it either fancy pants or you can get it inexpensive and uh, inexpensively. And that's what I like. I like the Sandstorm um, model and I like the big size of it, but I don't like it so much that I want to spend, uh, you know, 300 bucks on a titanium version. And as a matter of fact, uh, I like the look of the inexpensive version better. It's just less, you know, fewer notes. It, it's, a, it's a little more of a classy design to me, a little less overdone. Uh, and that's also what we see with the Balance K, in my humble opinion. I think this is a, a really uh, nice knife, and and it's the kind of thing that I, I just want to get this out of here. This has been uh, here for almost a month now, and it's one of those knives that could just slip into the collection accidentally and get lost there. So I got to get this out into the hands of someone uh, who will appreciate it and use it, a gentleman junkie. So this is what we're going to be giving away on November 17th, the third, <clears throat> did my voice just crack? Uh, the third Thursday of November. That's what we do here. Third Thursday of November or of the month. We do the gentleman junkie knife giveaway on Thursday night knives. And then you'll notice on episodes surrounding uh, or uh, before or after, we'll usually just throw a random giveaway in there of a knife. That's always fun to do. Excuse me. <coughs> oh. Manaja, it's coming on. It's winter time, uh, almost. Anyway, still to come on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we're going to take a look at the new Jack Wolf knives and knife. I have it in my hot little hands. Uh, we got some Orion knives, and then we'll take a look at 10 just fabulous tiny knives. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. It's a rare occasion that there's an intersection between uh, Knife Life News and the state of the collection. Uh, but uh, I happen to be on the cutting edge of this one, uh, and that is rare, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Uh, so in uh, Knife News, you will see an article on the new Jack Wolf Knives knife, and I have that in my hands here. This is the Cyborg Jack, and it is a different kind of knife for Ben Belkin. Uh, it is a, let me see if I can show this off a little bit better. Uh, you can see an angular look to this one. That is why I think this uh, uh, is making such a splash. Now, uh, you know Ben Belkin and you know Jack Wolf Knives. It's a traditional, modern take on traditional designs. He, uh, he takes and tweaks some of the most classic slip joint uh, knives and... Um, you know, has them produced to the utmost, uh, the, you know, they're produced amazingly, let's say. Anyway, this last one, he took some liberties with the design and really, really did some cool stuff with the handle. He wanted something more angular, and uh, that is definitely what he got. And it is comfortable, and it's different, but the same, you know what I mean? It's the same incredible build, same incredible materials, M390, titanium, micarta, or fat carbon, in an incredible build with great walk and talk. So all of the hallmarks of a great traditional or slip joint knife, uh, yet he anglified the handle. No, that sounds like he made it English. He angled the handle in such a way that it looks modern and has a real modern feel, um, but 
man, in hand, it feels great. Here it is with that sweet carbon fiber. Um, he has been putting some incredible carbon fibers on these. There's a there's a pink fat carbon fiber on this one. Also, that is going out. I got the uh, the green micarta, and uh, man, that suits me. That suits me. Uh, though pink carbon fiber, I have none of that in the collection. That would be cool to have. Also, I, I think it'd be, you know, if you have the means and the inclination, I think Jack Wolf knives would be one of those great things to collect. You know, like if you like PM2s and you just collect all the PM2s, it'd be great to collect all the different versions of all these knives. <laughs> but uh, I get ahead of myself. Uh, yeah, these facets and these angles feel great in hand and you get the you get the uh, great walk and talk. Uh, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Jack Wolf Knives um, uh, Cyborg Jack, as presented in Knife News, but uh, also as presented by my collection. So very happy to have that. Uh, thank you, Ben. Uh, second, I want to talk about tops for a second. You know, I love tops, and they're really hardcore outdoor knives. Um, you know, great uh, military knives, great combat knives, great outdoors knives, great. And then they started making the camping knives and all that. Uh, and then they dabbled in folders. That's really cool. And um, some some of their friction folders. And then they and then and then they did, the you know, the, the tack raise, which was cool. And then they did the tack raise, except with a comb for your beard. Well, now they've gone full fixed bladed hipster right here with a fixed comb. You've got a comb here for your beard, and that's it. It is a comb. They are making a 1095 comb with micarta and a leather pouch and all of that for your beard, you hipster. Um, I don't know. What do you think of this? Uh, I sound bitter, and I'm not. I'm not. I love tops. They're awesome. Uh, this, this does not take away from anything, but I wish that they would make some way to cut with this. Maybe... Maybe you make the teeth sharp. I know, I know it'd be risky when you do this, uh, but it, it can't be just a comb, guys. It can't. How about, a, how about a, a pokey pommel? How about a glass breaker there that you could use for pain compliance? Um, something, something. You just can't go full hipster, but you did. And I must admit, as a beard tourist who grows one half a year, that actually is pretty pretty nice uh i have one in my car of course uh and it's bamboo and it feels good on the face this might feel really great on the face but i refuse i refuse to like this uh just out of principle uh tops give me this with something else a glass breaker a hook uh a, a sharp edge maybe a point maybe a tanto point on this so you're just very careful when you comb uh but if you need to thrust you can all right so that's Tops going full hipster with the tack rake. A bittersweet day on the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, if you think what we do here on the Knife Junkie podcast is worth it, uh, please go check out Patreon. We have some really great, we have three great tiers of support. You get uh, sticker, uh, stickers, and uh, and then you also get entered into different, uh, uh, well, knife giveaways. And also you get exclusive content. Every time we do an interview here, we get a little bit extra and we present that to you early uh, during the week so you can get a little bit extra from the interview uh, questions maybe i don't feel are appropriate for the main uh, podcast or or unanswered questions from the main podcast you get all that uh and you get the satisfaction of knowing you're part of the knife junkie gang uh let's put it this way uh you can you can pay once a month or you can pay once a year and get 12 percent discount either way it's all good and if not if that's not your bag, I just appreciate you being here and listening and uh, joining the conversation. So uh, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or the QR code on screen. Again, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I uh, got a package from David Cam of Orion Knives and... Uh, it excited me greatly. Uh, one one had some swag in it, uh, which I will show right here, actually. Uh, here's a, a really cool craft I'm going to do with my kids, or with my younger daughter, actually. It's a wooden version of an Orion knife with a spring action that you can put together. We're going to put this together, and this will be hers. 
Um, and then he also sent me this fantastic uh, knife pouch. This is something they offer on their website. Uh, it has nice uh, plush inner inner pockets here, and you can put four knives staggered in opposite directions so they don't mar each other, which is appreciated. Uh, but the really exciting thing is this. Uh, he sent me, the, well, there are two of this, um, but the first is this Scorpio. Ah, this knife is so cool. So you know the Polaris, uh, the Orion Polaris came out uh, maybe two years ago, and we talked to David on the show about that knife. And it was a button lock before button locks became cool again. And man, it was great. Had great action, great ergonomics. It looked much like this in, in handle design. The blade was different. Uh, I think it was a little bit larger than this. I might be mistaken. Um, but this is the Scorpio, the follow-up design. And um, I got to say, all things considered, this one really rings my bell. I Something about this, whether it's that nice extreme clip point, you know how much I love clip points, with jimping on the clip. I mean, I love jimping and I love clip points and you put jimping on the clip. And I know that's utilitarian because it's a short blade, uh, but oh, it's just cool too. Major cool factor there. And then you've got, I think it's the blade, man. This blade is so cool. You've got this fuller that comes all the way to the front, giving you that shape up front. Love that cross section there. And uh, and then you've got a very nice, super thin, super sharp blade. Um, really great geometry, or uh, I'm not going to call it geometry, whatever this is, set up with the pivot, the lock, the flipper, and the thumb stud. And uh, every way you can deploy this, which is numerous, uh, it works great. You've got the uh, fuller. You've got the flipper, you've got the um, lock itself. You could just hold the button in and let it flip out. Uh, or you've got the thumb studs. Just a really cool knife. And I saw this come out uh, recently. I mean, I saw I saw when people got these, and I noted it, and I noted how cool it was, but I, I hadn't wasn't aware that it was available yet. And uh, it is, and it is so cool. This is a 14C28N. And of course, that's micarta. It it maintains a nice width, which we'll see when we take a look at the tiny knives coming up here is important for me personally uh, in my enjoyment of a smaller knife. Ergonomics on this are outstanding. You really want to use that choil. I guess you don't have to, but uh, it's a th like a three finger grip if you don't. And man, that's a solid grip. So very cool knife, uh, Orion Knives uh, uh, Scorpio. Oh, by the way, it's got purple anodized backspacer, blue anodized pivot collar, and uh, it's it's beautiful. Uh, so also, he sent me to check out uh, a prototype, and this one is the Cetus, C-E-T-U-S. And uh, it this one, I believe, is a steel frame lock, and it has a really cool uh, profile. This, to me, uh, reminds me of the Gununting, the the storied short sword used by the um, uh, the special marines in the southern Philippines, um, man, and they use them to great effect. It's sort of a sickle shape, but it has a point that you can use for thrusting. And um, this uh, is definitely, uh, to me, that's what it reminds me of because that's the lens through which I see things. So to me, this would make a really great sort of self defense knife. But also, I mean, just look at the look at the angle, look at where the tip is, and really really aggressively awesome utility knife uh look at the, the plunge grind i mean okay so it's hollow ground it's very thin the plunge grind gives you plenty of uh space to sharpen upward on this uh this is 14c28n you get really nice smooth action on this uh great jimping on the top i do like the fuller the fuller can be used as can the opening hole. Uh, again, this is a prototype, Orion Knives back there. Prototype, um, I guess for me, the one thing I would say is uh, uh, the flipper is less strong than the, than the flicking out. So, I mean, that's a, but that's something you see in prototypes. That's part of the prototyping process is dialing in the detent to be ideal for all 
uh, forms of opening. And that's a, that's definitely a challenge when you create a knife that has a bunch of different uh, forms of opening. We've kind of heard that. We've talked about that a lot uh, on, the sh on the interview shows. Um, what I really uh, like about what David did here with the flipper is how it nestles. First of all, it's a real low profile and it comes off of this ramp so that that ramp sort of dictates how you should how you should use it. Um, but also, I like how it hides in the frame once it's open. So the flipper tab isn't the guard itself. The flipper tab nestles inside the, the guard. And I like that it has that guard because... Uh, this does have a point, and though it's not, uh, you might not think of it as a thrusting point with that pistol grip, it could be used, or, or that overall arc, it could be used as a thruster uh, very well, so it's good to have this um, this guard here. Now, I would bet that David did not design this with gununting and tactical stuff in mind, or um, because really what he's done is design a, a nice full-size uh, utility blade here uh, so I, I think it's a great flex back and forth it'll be cool to see uh, what changes he makes and uh, I think it's very handsome knife too and that's a big thing for me so that is the Cetus prototype uh, from Orion Knives David thank you so much for loaning me this to check out uh, it's an honor what can I say it's really cool to see this knife in person I've seen pictures Okay, uh, next up, uh, I just want to note that I just showed off this Cyborg Jack. This was new in my collection this week. And of course, it's getting tons of play and replay uh, in the pocket. And I'm looking forward to the, um, the leather slip taking on that cool angular um, pattern. You know how leather slips end up uh, kind of impressing or, yeah, uh, embossing themselves around the knife. Well, I look forward to seeing that angular shape on one of my uh, leather cases. All right, uh, next up, this is a big one. This is my birthday knife this year, and uh, it uh, just arrived this past week uh, from Hogtooth Knives. It's the Ruffian, and it is, man, it's a great, great knife. So now uh, I have this, and I have the Tonto now, we're working on the prototype. As a matter of fact, I thought the prototype was coming in the box with this uh, for our uh, collaboration knife. Uh, but now I have three hogtooth knives. This, my 50th birthday knife, the extravagant uh, uh, sub-hilt fighter. And then I have the, uh, the Tonto EDC that I carry all the time. Well, this one is quite possibly going to eclipse that, though this is a little bit larger and not always as comfortable as the small one, depending on what I'm wearing. But anyway, <laughs> I, I have to show it off with the sheath because this is how he sends it with the awesome discrete carry concepts uh, uh, clip. I love those clips. A great sheath with great retention and the push off, which I love. And here's the knife. Uh, just a beautiful, fully swedged clip point. I mean, look at that long swedge. Almost uh, you could call that a harpoon, perhaps. Uh, but here you have really nice, sharp, fine cut jimping and a great place to put your thumb. I mean, this just melts into your hand. This is uh, acid tumbled uh, 154 cm hollow ground. Uh, not as thinly hollow ground as the Tonto, but it's a thicker uh, blade stock here. And oh my God, this thing is so wickedly sharp. So wickedly sharp. I, I might show it off in a second if I can access a piece of paper without moving. Um, you've got this really great sharpening choil. I love that. And the blade and, and the uh, finger guard is just awesome. Uh, the ergonomics, it just melts in your hand, as I mentioned. And then the use of the Anzo pattern here in the milling um, or the, you know, um, file work here is really nice because your fingers do fit into those grooves they find their way into those grooves really nicely and the fact that there aren't any grooves down here at the pommel and the last fifth one fifth of the handle is full width it almost in in hand makes it feel like there's a ball there or something that you're not going to come over like the pommel of a sword so it gives you especially in reverse grip i feel it uh just a really positive feel it's 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 just not going to slip out of your hand. And also with that blade guard, it's not going to slip forward. 
I really like <laughs> the idea of carrying one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, four and a half inches. I love having a four and a half inch Bowie on me. I love that. Um, now, is it always legal? Uh, only unless I show it. And actually, I've been, I don't want to say um, showing it, but I have been making it somewhat visible. Uh, uh, oftentimes, you can see the handle of it if you look, uh, because my shirt plumes over it or, or whatever. But um, anyway, we don't have to talk about that. Uh, the, the point is, I do love having uh, a Bowie knife on me at my at my disposal, but one that is small and um, carryable. Uh, very, very usable knife. I, I used the small Tonto EDC, which is definitely a backup tactical knife. I use that as one of my best, um, I'm pointing upstairs like you can see, one of my best uh, feather stick knives for the hard kiln dried wood I get from the grocery store to do a family uh, fire pit night. Um, so yeah, hollow ground 154 CM is amazing. I also want to show off the point of this knife. That swedge and that edge comes to such a point. It's like a dagger. Uh, it's like a full diamond tip. There we go. Just beautiful. Very, very sharp. It's probably my sharpest knife, uh, currently. Uh, that is uh, my birthday knife, the Hogtooth Knives Ruffian. Um, so very, very proud to have this in my collection. And uh, man, I just love Matt Chase's work. He's a great guy, too, it, it, it turns out. Um, but even if he were not a great guy, I love his knives. And um, I think I'll make a maybe an annual tradition out of getting a Hogtooth knife for my birthday. Who knows? You know. Maybe I'll widen that out. But I do know that next year I want a Bowie from him, like a full size uh, nine inch Bowie, but one that I don't feel squeamish about uh, taking out and and smacking around. All right. Uh, speaking of Bowies that I'm not squeamish about taking out and smacking around, this is a man. This is an impulse buy, uh, though it's uh, an impulse buy that I stocked for a long time. Um, this is a, this is, you know, I call myself the knife junkie. This is a fix. This is a Bowie fix. Whereas the Bowie, I just showed you that hog tooth knives. That was a, like I took, that was a, you know, a uh, custom. I chose the handles and, and we, we, you know, we worked on it. I considered, I saved up for it and all that. Not this, this is like, this is like, mm. uh, this is a great knife. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost, uh, I'm shocked. This is the rough rider black mule. Bowie in three CR 13 MOV three, three, three CRs. That's all just three. Um, all right. I got this knife because it's 25 bucks and it is a, a $25 version of this, the shining mountain Bowie um, designed uh, by Mike Stewart and just a, a gorgeous Bowie shape. And uh, here, this one uh, is a Bark River version of the of the design, and it costs literally 10 times more. I paid literally 10 times more for this. Uh, now it goes for much more because it's they're not making them right now. Um, but, you know, recently I took this out and uh, used it a little bit and made a video of me chopping a little bit of wood with it and such. And uh, I loaned it to Kep Mugnesshart, who took it out into the out uh, into the bush and I think in Canada and did some camping with it. But I always kind of feel like that's a nice, expensive knife. I don't, what, you know, um, so I got the same knife, same blade shape for 25 bucks, one tenth of the cost in three CR 13. And so yesterday when it arrived, uh, I took it out and I, I did, uh, I did a bunch of batoning with it. I batoned some of that nasty kiln dried wood I did some feather stick, you know, carving with it. Just did some general like pointy stick carving and I'll be damned. But this Rough Rider 3CR13 MOV Bowie is still paper cut and sharp here. Yeah, actually, here. I did say I would show off the edge of the hog tooth and I will in a second. But after all of the abuse I put this through, you know, seeing if it was worth it, this, uh, 3CR is still slicey and sharp. I don't know what the hell they did with it. I guess it's a great heat treat or something. 
but man alive, this thing uh, has taken some abuse. So if you need a Bowie fix and you don't want to spend much money, oh my gosh, I, I recommend it without any reservation. Here, this is the hog tooth. I mean, the, the hog tooth just slips between the atoms. It's a totally different kind of sharp. Uh, but I assure you, this, this uh, black mule Bowie is really good. And I guess I shouldn't be so shocked, and I'll tell you why. You know, uh, about a year and a half ago, I spent a good deal of money getting a whole bunch of uh, Rough Rider slip joint knives because I was so impressed with them. They're so inexpensive. Um, they're built so nicely uh, that I figured, well, why not? You know, I could get uh, patterns that I want to check out. And then maybe I get more expensive versions of them. But Rough Rider gave me that um, that service of of experiencing a, a pattern or a style for very little. So if you're interested at all in Bowie's or you just want a fixed blade knife to bang around and you're um, you don't know what to get or you don't want to spend a lot, I got to say. And now the only place I think you'll find this is Smoky Mountain Knife Works because it's a Rough Rider. But um, go go get one of these. It's not uh, going to win a beauty contest in terms of the finish or anything and i you know i can't uh, i haven't flitzed it but uh i've used alcohol to get some of the sap and stuff off the blade and you can still see the marring and stuff that's all fine it's a 25 five dollar knife um i highly recommend it i gotta say and uh, i guess uh, i shouldn't be surprised because their slip joints are good uh, also not for nothing it does come in a pretty damn good and stout um nylon sheath i like this better even than the one that tops sends with their nylon sheath knives. So that is uh, the Rough Rider Black Mule Bowie. Look, it even just looks cool in hand. And uh, those grinds, by the way, they're perfect. Perfect grinds. And I guess it's machine perfect, but it doesn't matter. They're great. Uh, so check it out if interested. All right, we go from this large nine and a half inch bladed Bowie to tiny knives now tiny to me is smaller than three inches three inch blade um and some of them get very tiny and some of them are just right at the three inch mark uh but i i wanted to make a special note before we go into this list that i wanted them to be knives that are available um so i have a couple of tiny knives here that you cannot just readily get like the uh, gec number 19 or the gec number six these are tiny little Warncliffe slip joints, and I love them. Uh, you drop them in the bottom of your pocket, and they rattle around in there. Uh, this is a two-inch. These are just two-inch blades. You don't need a slip for them. You might want to if you want them to stay pristine, but they're just small and nice to drop in pocket and forget about and then use when you need them. Beautiful materials, too. Uh, but they're not readily available, so they didn't make the list. Also uh, of note is an, a knife that Mike Emler made and gave me. Um, this is a little Kiridashi he does. And uh, this is such a great little knife. It's a, a um, chisel ground, modern, you know, stylized take on a Kiridashi. And it works great. Keep it on my desk and uh, pull it out and use it when I need it. Got this, uh, I just put a fob on it to, to beef it up a little bit, but also not readily available, super sharp. Uh, not readily available, but uh, just another testimony to the fact that these tiny knives can, can be really, really useful, awesome knives. All right, first up in this list is new and something I'm very excited about. I've been carrying this a lot. This is the QSP Penguin Mini. The Penguin Mini. So we all know the Penguin, regular Penguin. This is the the regular penguin uh, in in its original dress, I believe that uh, that blue jean micarta. So you get the same awesome blade shape, just smaller and uh, smaller handle, and, but the same um, lock pivot thumb stud setup. So you get great action out of this. Um, I want it to be drop shut eventually. Uh, it's hard to get on such a small blade but it is very smooth and it's getting there uh just one shake and it drops in i like the triangle circular uh, logo what does that remind me of i keep looking at does that look like something from harry potter or 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 narcotics anonymous or something i don't know it's it looks like someone else's symbol but i like the way it looks anyway uh this has jimping and it 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 has a full four finger grip if you come up on the 
finger guard there, which is actually very comfortable to do. But how I've used this most is like this, just like that uh, for opening packages, opening boxes, that tape, that kind of thing. Such a great knife. Now, if you go to the QSP website, you'll see that they uh, these come in a bunch of different flavors, uh, 14C28N, but you can get different uh, different handles and uh, very, very cool. I love the natural black, the natural with the black. All right, next up in Tiny Knives, this one has gotten probably more use than any other in this list, and uh, that is my Cold Steel Micro Recon 1. Yep, the Micro Recon 1. Still, still with the triad lock, except this one is so small and so old and fussy, it's hard to engage these days. I need to take it apart and and uh, fix it up. But I do know the guts of these uh, minis or these micros are slightly different from the regular recon ones. Uh, and I just can't remember how. It's been ages since I opened this up. Uh, but I do remember noting that. Uh, OS 8 from back in the day when they basically just spray painted their OS 8. Uh, that coating just comes right off. But that doesn't bother me. Especially uh, this was my keychain knife forever. Now I don't have a keychain knife. Um, for a while, it was another knife on this list. And recently, I just have been not having a keychain knife. Uh, great. This is another one. I was talking about those little GECs. You just drop it in your pocket and forget about. This is a great one for that because it's very thin, very light. But the strongest, <laughs> no doubt, the strongest tiny little knife and charming. And you can get this uh, in Tonto. They do not have it in clip point. <coughs> Oh, also, if you like uh, if you like the fluorescent colors and such, you can get it like that. Speaking of fluorescent colors, uh, this one has been in my little EDC pouch that has everything I might need uh, in a pinch uh, that I keep in my backpack. I've had this in there forever. I got this when I first started following Nut and Fancy, I guess, in 2008. So I've had this probably that long. Um and it just sits in that thing and goes unused and forgotten. I've had to use it on rare occasion. Uh, I, I do remember once this was my EDC because I do remember once leaving the house without a knife and having my backpack. And uh, I don't know why I didn't have you didn't carry any one of my other backpack knives. I keep a, a full size recon one and and a SOG seal pup and other things in there. So but I guess I didn't have those at the time because uh, I do remember carrying this one. Only once, but what an awesome little knife. Now, uh, these got a lot of uh, positive press for a long time because they're um, designed by Bob Dozier, uh, who's a great knife maker, classic. Uh, they are manufactured in the United States by, oh no, this one's Taiwan. <laughs> I take it back. By an American company, K-Bar, that everyone loves and respects and uh, are super inexpensive. These were like 20 bucks. And man, they're great. You can squeeze it. I mean, it's it's skinny, light, uh, awesome little knife. You could definitely drop this one in the pocket and forget about it. You see, it's uh, kind of encrusted with dust here because it gets no action these days. I should take you out. I should take you out. You don't take me out no more. Bobby, why don't you take me out no more? Uh, don't worry. We'll, we'll go out. We'll have dinner. It'll be terrific. Okay, uh, next up is a fixed blade. And this man, I got this. This is a little big knife for sure. I got this from the man himself, Fred Perrin, at Blade Show 2022. Uh, this is his Le Bowie neck knife. And these are made in France. In France, uh, I can't remember the name of the company all of a sudden uh, that makes this. Uh, but made for Fred Perrin in France. Uh, and if you know anything about Fred Perrin, or if you don't know anything about Fred Perrin, he's got some knives out from Spyderco, the Street Beat and the Street Bowie and the new Subway Bowie and um, the PPT, a really cool Warncliffe style folder from him. He's a French dude. He was a, a commando and and a hand to hand uh, uh, fighting expert, not just with knives, but all sorts of dirty little weapons and pokey things and a uh, very interesting guy. When I was talking to him uh, at his booth, he, he he doesn't speak French so well, but he speaks the international language of violence. I, and I should say he he's a he's a very very nice and charming guy. I'm not saying he was rude or or nasty in any way, but he was he was very enthusiastic about his products. And he had one thing uh, that kind of 
wraps around your palm and and you know, it just looks like a string going around your palm on this side but when you open it up it's this nasty kind of claw thing you can swipe people with he had a lot of cool things things you could tie onto your boot lace that make your kicks worse and then of course tons of little hideaway knives and uh this is one that that they um that they manufacture that you can buy and sometimes you can find them like this with the g10 handles other times uh, i think they're more readily available in, in just the skeletonized uh steel handle but it's really thin wickedly thin and and sharp a very very thin behind the edge slicey kind of thing and then just a full row of jimping right up the spine for the thumb that notch he designs is not a semi-circle it's usually uh, in his knives kind of excuse me almost triangular i mean it's curved here but um it it orients the knife in a more downward angle so you get more cutting uh, power out of your slashes and swipes um, but as you can see it keeps the the point center line so in this lineup of tiny knives i had to have a bowie knife and this is the bowie knife for that uh, for that uh, category now i i used to have the minimalist all of my minimal minimalists are are now either lost or given away and my last one that i gave away to uh to my wife's cousin's girlfriend, lovely uh, young woman who moved to New York. Um, I showed her that. She was like, oh, this is really cool. And I, it's yours. Take it to New York. Um, so this is my last small Bowie. Uh, <coughs> perfect for this list. I'm sorry. I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but I did. And you all came for the ride. So uh, tiny Bowie. Now we have a tiny switchblade. Uh, we actually have two. This was my key ring knife for quite a while. Uh, it took the place of the micro recon one. And this is the Kershaw Launch 9. And before I open it up and show you the beautiful blade, I just want you to see how nicely weathered that anodized aluminum got living on the keys. That was by design, of course. Look at that. Oh, I love this thing. Such a futuristic look. Uh, beautiful little drop point blade with the fuller. Um, this would be a cool knife to have non-automatic and maybe a little bit larger and with uh, bearings. You could flip that up, flick it open, you know, spidey flick it, middle finger flick it. Uh, but just a great little useful knife. This is CPM 154, as are all the uh, launch knives. CPM 154 is a great steal. First time I had that steel as opposed to 154 CM. They're both great, but the CPM is the powder metallurgy version of that. First time I had that was on a ProTech, ProTech Rockeye. And man, it gets laser thin and super sharp. Uh, great action on this little Launch 9. Um, if it's legal in your state, which uh, more and more it is, uh, like my state, Virginia, and soon PA, um, you can have this. I think it is legal in the state of PA, but they still have the the local laws, so they need to pass that uh, one. They need to pass a uh, a law to get rid of it and rid of the local laws. And now, for some reason, that term is escaping me. That's another journey I just took you on. Okay, next up is a is a tiny automatic. This is the Shamshire, and look at this. I, I love this pullback action. This is a, a D-Rocket design, Dariel Caston and uh, uh, someone else. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Who is Berno? B-R-N-O. I know the Cast Castion, uh, the, the D-Rocket is the logo to the left, and then B-R-N-O born is the other. This is a collaboration, but uh, Boker Plus put this little honey together, and um, they sent it to me um, when I got the the Texas toothpick uh, as a surprise. And I greatly appreciate it. And I really love it. No clip, which I also like, uh, like this one here, no clip. You just drop it in the pocket. And that is that same with the, uh, the mini or the micro recon one. I do like that in my tiny knives. I don't need a clip uh, unless it's so thin. You need it for girth. Sometimes the clip is valuable for girth, just for holding on to. In this case, it fits perfectly in my three finger grip and i don't need anything like that don't even don't even need a um lanyard for this one what is the blade steel on this hang on a sec uh 
This is D2 blade steel. I like the blade shape on this one, and I also like the swedge. I appreciate the swedge on such a small knife. This is something you might have on your person uh, when you get to the car after shopping in Walmart and you need to open up that clamshell package. Uh, you know, you, you have that swedge. That is definitely going to help you in penetrating uh, that tough material. Okay, next up is another um, fixed blade. This one, uh, QSP, this is the Canary. And I really like this knife. And I also really like the chain. Usually on neck knives, I, I eschew the chain for a 550 paracord. In this case, I kept the chain because it actually looks like, I don't know, kind of a necklace. You know, you, you have the ball and the, it looks sort of like a Morse code necklace, actually. What would that say in Morse code? Probably nothing. But you have a ball and then a longer one and a ball and a longer one. And so when you're wearing this, it almost looks like, hey, Bob, I didn't know you're a necklace guy. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot you don't know about me. Uh, what can, guess what kind of necklace I'm wearing? Uh, so you have the carbon fiber-esque um, Kydex sheath, very thin. The whole package is thin on this QSP Canary. And uh, I have the Lux edition. Look at this. So beautiful. Damas steel blade that's aluminum foil carbon fiber, swirled carbon fiber. Whoever heard of such a thing? You've got diagonal fluting crowned spine. So that jimping is on a diagonal. And actually, uh, it, it first feels odd, but it works really well. And this whole affair is crowned up here. And look at the pattern on that blade steel. Just beautiful. Uh, this is a very lightweight knife. This is, uh, it just, and it could be these four lightning holes, which you also could braid a... Uh, 550 paracord and have a little fob on down here if that's your thing uh, this one i don't require that at all that even though it's a three finger grip it's very very secure in hand it's just great design uh yeah thin and light is this uh, canary so i i think the uh the sheathing system works great and not for nothing i kind of like the little necklace effect i look in the mirror and i'm like yeah yeah necklace uh, okay, so next up, another fixed blade, and uh, this one is a, another drop in the pocket, tiny little affair, but it is for nastiness. This is a little lapel dagger, SOE lapel dagger from Station 9. This is their number four. They have a lot of cool uh, designs all based on, on sort of... Uh, um, clandestine weaponry used during World War II and and uh, and before that. Uh, look at this. So this uh, you may have seen these lapel daggers before. A lot, a number of people make them, but you've got uh, these rows of essentially jimping on both sides that really grip the hand. And even without the paracord, uh, I remember uh, this summer attacking a watermelon that no one was eating and I didn't cut up. And uh, I walked by it and, and poked it a bunch of times immaturely and then and then later just threw it out because because but the point is I didn't have this cord on there yet and I was still able to grip this in my fist like this and poke and stab the the watermelon rind without without any issue. Um, these edges are very sharp. They are very cutting sharp, and that point is wickedly, you know, pointy and nasty, diamond-like. But the jimping rows here work so well uh, that I didn't need this cord. Now, this cord is great, though, for... Um, now, I can't remember how I was doing it. I watched their website. They have a bunch of different ways. You can kind of walk around like this and then flip it out and then, boom, have it, have it in your hand. But it, it's also kind of lassoed in there with that paracord so if it if you hit something hard uh, as you're thrusting and it pushes back the cord will stop it from sliding back and cutting up your fingers uh, so there are a lot of different ways you can <laughs> walk around with this little knife in your hands but i i just love it it is tiny but it is wicked you could do uh if you are skilled or desperate enough you could do some some serious uh escape act with this thing uh, this nasty little implement. So I love that thing. Uh, uh, I want to get some more Station 9 knives in here. They have some pretty compelling stuff. 
so you might see some of that in the future here. Next up, uh, couldn't have this list without a slip joint and without a classic slip joint. Yes, it's the the peanut from Case. Uh, peanut is a pattern that uh, can be found across many different uh, brands, but this is the Case Peanut. I'm, I'm not sure as I speak, actually, if they're the ones who first came up with it, but it's the Peanut has a, what is it, one, two inch clip point blade. This one is from their uh, CV line, chrome vanadium. So that's uh, analogous to 1095 blade steel. <clears throat> I bought this uh, on blade forums from someone who uh, patinaed it and just put incredible edges on these on these blades. This is the most useful pen blade in my entire collection. Such a great little pen blade and totally uh, a scalpel. Again, my hat is off to the person I bought this to because they put incredible edges on these. Now, I find that I'm going to try and hold this still. I find that uh, Case puts way more attention into their chrome vanadium lines. Um, you buy the stainless steel ones for their collectability, for their covers, for the series, and that kind of thing. But I think for a serious Case knife, you either go totally cheap and get the Working Man editions, where they don't even polish out the grind lines, or you get a CV, whether it's the yellow Delrin or one of these... Uh, what do they call these like brown honey bone or something? Um, they're just really, really good. So if you're a case um, spectic, a skeptic, <laughs> sorry, a case skeptic, do try the chrome vanadium uh, models. I, like I said, more attention is paid on them and they're outstanding. Last up, man. Oh, I love this knife and and kind of opened my eyes to the, the genre uh, as something I, I want to continue to collect. And this is the Baby Rhino by Off Grid. The Baby Rhino. Now, this one is a small version of a large 3.75 inch bladed knife, one of my favorite off grid uh, knives to carry. And uh, what's interesting about this is that uh, it is a reduction by whatever percentage of the main design without any redesign to accommodate uh, the size difference. Ordinarily, I would say that is not a good way to go because the design is naturally going to have to change to accommodate the hand as it grows smaller. The hand doesn't grow smaller also, so but it just so happens that if you look at it, this is an exact like uh, reduction by a certain percentage of the main knife, and it fits perfectly, fits perfectly in hand. That's that's why I love this knife so much. You know, I thought I thought initially when I saw it, like, oh, that's cute. I like it as a concept, but how's it going to feel? And it's great. And part of the reason, um, I think just by chance, the the uh, the profile works ergonomically, uh, whether it's large or small, just by chance. But this is not by chance. The full width of the original knife is maintained in the small version, which makes all the difference. It's very similar uh, to the QSP, same thing with the QSP. And it makes the reduction in size very much less noticeable. And it makes the knife feel so sure in hand that you could do hard twisting work with this or the QSP. Whereas with this thin uh, Bob Dozier uh, K-Bar, I would feel less inclined to do so, uh, less, um, less sure of a grip and less uh, sure about the tensile strength because it's so thin, meaning the strength going this twisting it. So uh, I love this knife. I, I think that that uh, Carrie's designs translate well, large and small. Uh, but this one really, really uh, illustrates that and really shows how a, what is this, two inch bladed knife, Two and a half inch bladed knife can really, really be a little big knife. I mean, I would I would feel confident if I had to carry this as my only knife. My wife has the gray version of this, and she quite frequently carries that as her only knife. Um, I would be confident. This thing is awesome. So uh, so are all of these. I love these little big knives. Um, and so here's my list of tiny knives. Do you like any tiny knives? Uh, let me know what they are. I know of one that I would like to add to this collection, and it would probably be large on the tiny side, but I still think it's sub three inch and that's uh 
Colin Maison Pierre's uh, CM Designs Tonic, um, made by Best Tech. That that innovative uh, backlock. I really want to check that out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast and my and my walk down Great Tiny Knives Lane. It's been a pleasure. Uh, do check out the newsletter, which I'm getting a little bit better at getting out. And and Jim is totally making great, uh, adding pictures and stuff. It's just weekly thoughts or weekly things that have happened to me knife wise, and uh, I jot them down. Uh, so check it out there, and then also uh, check out Sunday's. Uh, interview show it promises to be a humdinger all right for jim working his magic behind the switcher my name is bob demarco saying until next time i implore you don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website thenifejunkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on youtube at thenifejunkie.com slash youtube check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash instagram and join our facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash facebook and if you have a question or comment email them to bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast